Hey, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a specific case in Simeo. Um, this is a very particular case, and I think there's probably many, many different ways to solve this issue. Uh, I'll demonstrate one that I can think of. Um, so I'll, get, I'll start with this. Uh, I'll explain the problem by showing this example. So I have a source, and it's going to generate these customer model entities. Uh, generates at a fixed interval of 10 minutes. And then once we hit 5.5 hours, and here's my clock here, this is gonna be my clock. Once it hits 5.5 hours, you'll see that it stops creating model entities. And then the mod the, the store uh, server processes these uh, customers at a rate of 10 per, uh, each one at 10 minutes, that's process time. Off shift rule is finished work already started. So if there's any monitoring that's in the server, okay, uh, this is based on a work schedule. So if you go on data, work schedule, there's a work schedule for the store and it basically only runs for five hours, right? So uh, once we start the simulation for half an hour, nothing happens into the server, you'll just see customers waiting. And then from 30 minutes onto uh, five hours and 30 minutes, the store will start processing, but uh, it'll go off shift at hour 5.5, okay? Then any customer that's stuck, that's already started processing, the store server will finish it up because it says finish or off shift or finish work already started. But I'll show you this case where what if you have a bunch of model entities that are in the input buffer, then what happens? Okay, so let's demonstrate, let's run. So nothing happens until 0.5 and now the store is on shift. Okay, so now it's starting to process customers and it'll keep going until this clock is 5.5. Then we know the store goes off shift. Okay, and once it goes off shift, you'll notice the model entity that's already started processing will get full finish, but any model process, model, oh, there it is. So any model entity, customer model entity that was already in the processing queue when the clock hit 5.5, it finished processing, right? However, the, there are these other model entities that are now sitting inside the input buffer that can no longer, they, can, they can't really go on. They're stuck, right? Until the store goes back on shift, okay? So how do we set up our simulation so that we still, we leave the store server on so that these model entities that are in the input buffer, when it goes out, when the store goes off shift, how do we make sure these model entities are also processed, okay? Uh, it's not as simple as simply clicking finish work or start over here, okay? We can't just do that. That only applies to a model entity that's already inside the processing queue in the store server when the uh, when the store goes off shift. So how do we deal with this, okay? Again, there are many, many, I think there's probably multiple ways to do this. Um, I can think of uh, you know a couple ways. I'll try to uh, show you one way to do this. Okay, and uh, one way you can do this is just take advantage of the add-on processes. Okay, so if you go on the store, if you scroll down and add-on processes, uh, the ones that I'm looking at is really this off shift, and then probably the exit at one too. And I'll demonstrate why you need both there. So let me start with the off shift. Okay, and I double click on off shift, and this add-on process will run once that store server goes off shift, okay? And, and you know, this add a process to basically do the following, right? You should check, okay, when you go off shift, check that input buffer, of, check the input buffer of the store server. If there's any model entities waiting in there, uh, I wanna make sure you finish, right? I want, I want the store to stay on and finish out and finish processing all those models that are in the input buffer. Okay, so that's the simple add-on process. It's a simple, uh, basically, decide if statement uh, that you're gonna run. Okay, so let's uh, put in that logic now, and then there's probably need a few other things here to make this work properly. Okay, um, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide. Okay, um, is there anything else inside the input buffer? And we probably also want to check, are there anything being processed as well? Okay, if any one of those are non-zero, then I'm going to make sure the schedule stays on, basically, or the server still has a capacity. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. Let me open this up a little bit so you can see the whole expression here. 
So one of the first thing I'm gonna do is, is there anything in the input buffer? Okay, so my server is called store. So store dot, um, let's do input buffer. Turn off the sound really quick. Okay, input buffer dot um, number weight, sorry, input buffer, I'm sorry, content dot number waiting. Okay, that's the number of model entities that are inside the input buffer. That's square and zero. So there's something else in the input buffer when that store goes off shift. Okay, or we'll still run this when the processing contents number waiting is also greater than zero. Okay, so this second part might not be as intuitive why we do the, why we check for this. It's because it says you know you can just check off the condition finish processing the ones that are already started, but why even you know set this? Okay. Uh, it'll become clear when I go to the opposite side of this. Okay. Well, um, yeah. So let's set this up first. Let's run that first. Okay. And then um, what I also want to do is I probably want to create some kind of a like a marker or some kind of use a variable to define whether or not a this particular server is uh, off shift or on shift. I know there's a built-in function to do that, but I want really a, uh, a, a state variable at the model level that tells me, you know, is the store is the store server off shift or on shift, uh, so that we can use this variable for other logic, other process, uh, and other parts if we have to. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the states. I'm gonna set up a integer variable. I'm gonna call this um, store of shift okay so it's so maybe a little bit counterintuitive here but if the value is one that means the it's the store server is off shift if the value is zero then the store shift store um server is um, on shift okay so let me go back to the process here i'm gonna do an assign step here uh, so this decides is there anything else waiting in the input buffer, or is there something being processed? Okay, if it's true, that means you know that we should keep things on, right? Because there's there are customers waiting, there are customers being served, right? Okay, so then this save variable I'm going to change is uh, the store off shift, the the save variable we just created. I'm going to set that value to uh, uh, one. Okay, now that's probably you know, to avoid confusion here, I might have to, I might want to rechange that value there. Um, okay, so let me go back and let's, let me redo the logic. Let me think about this. So do I want to change the variable name so that it's a little bit awkward to say off shift? No, I think it's okay um, because, okay. So this add on shift, add on process runs when the store goes off shift. So it decides, is there anything running I mean, is there anything waiting in the input buffer? Is there anything being processed? If yes, then I'm gonna change this variable to one, okay? So what this really means is that, okay, my store server is off shift technically, okay? But things are happening still, things are processing, okay? So we know this variable tells me that, okay? Because the fact that this add-on process runs and goes to the tree, uh, to the tree clause means that in this value turned one, that means uh, the, the store server is off shift currently, so it's a one value. So it's on, it's on, it's true for store off shift. So it's, it's currently technically off shift, but things are happening, right? Things are processing, right? Okay, so that's what this signifies. Okay, so what do I want to do next then? Okay, um, I probably also want to say that okay, if this is a case, then um, I want to set up since I am using work schedules right now. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna create a special work schedule where it's basically on the whole time. Okay, it's always on. And the reason I want to do this using work schedule is so that I can exploit that cost multiplier if I have to uh, charge overtime hours. Okay, um, this, uh, if I go back to my data table and look at the work schedule, see notice here's a cost multiplier of one. Okay, so during those hours, my wage is the wage. And I think if you go back to my store, I've already set up this resource cost, $20 per hour, basically, whether or not it's idle or used, it's $20 per hour, okay? Um, go back to data. So I'm gonna create a one that signifies overtime. 
over time. Okay. And I'm going to create a date pattern called over time. And then the way the overtime date is going to work, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what because I'm going to just turn this on and off based on uh, when the when it starts and ends, basically. So um, this this is not really a schedule. It's kind of like okay, if it happens, we're going to point to this work schedule because um, I'm going to exploit this cost multiplier. So I'm going to assume so cost multiplier usually is a fifty percent premium, so it's one point five hours. Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry, 1.5, the regular rate. Okay, so that's my cost multiplier there. Uh, so when we're at off ship, but we're set to process stuff, we're gonna switch the schedule to this overtime day so that um, we start accruing this cost multiplier here based on the cost multiplier. Okay, we're gonna charge wages based on the cost multiplier. So let me do this here, overtime day, overtime day. Okay, and then go back to processes. So it's off shift right now. There's stuff in my input buffer and the processing queue. So you know we still have to keep things on, keep the storage server on. Okay, and this variable tells me that we're currently off shift, or we're, but we're still processing. Okay, um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change my change the work schedule. So I'm gonna go to all steps here, and go to set work schedule. Okay, I'm gonna drag that there. And the resource type, I'm gonna change it to specific object. And I'm gonna change it to my uh, store server. And the new work schedule I'm gonna set it at is the overtime work schedule. Okay, so if you go back to this, if you start running, you'll see there will be a change. We're not quite done yet. Okay, there, we do have a few other loose ends here, but let's see what happens when I hit 5.5. Okay, before it turned white and the, there were customers that are stuck in the input buffer, this is what happens when we hit 5.5 now. Okay, so you see we're at 5.8, things are still processing because the store is now still basically active. It's uh, on shift, right? Okay, because we changed the work schedule from the original store schedule to overtime, the store, so the day patterns from a store day to this uh, overtime day, okay? So that it seems like it's working, but now if you keep running this, okay, now the problem is there's nothing going on, but the store stays open, right? This is a problem, right? Okay, so we gotta find a way then the opposite side to check, okay, how do we turn off? Like once we're done processing everybody, anyone in the input buffer, how do we turn the server off basically and make it go back to the original work schedule that it was using before, okay? So that's what we're gonna do next, okay? so. The one way you can do that is we can go back again to the store and then the add-on process we're gonna look at is look at the exited add-on process. So the logic here is once a customer model entity leaves this server, it's always gonna run this check, okay? And this is gonna check uh, basically are we off, you know, are we off shift? Do we have stuff waiting? If not, then we're basically gonna go back to our original schedule that we set earlier, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is decide, okay? Uh, I need to decide, it's basically a statement, um, are we on this special case where we're off shift or we're, we're still processing, okay? So this is where we can use that variable we said earlier, store off shift equals one. Remember, we set this variable here, okay? So this signifies, you know, basically there's stuff in the input buffer or the processing queue, okay? When technically that stores off shift, right? So this tells me, is that the case here? If it's true, then we're gonna decide next, um, you know, we're gonna do one more decide, we do another check, okay. Um, are there, is the number of things waiting um, in the input buffer zero? And is there anything else being processed, okay? So are we basically, are we done, okay? Is there anything else that we have to process, okay? So I'm gonna do store uh, dot input buffer. Uh, contents number waiting equals zero. This is zero and store processing queue dot contents dot number waiting zero. Okay, so that this means there's nothing in the input buffer and there's nothing in process right now. 
Okay, then what do we do? We change the schedule back to our original, right? So I'm gonna go to set work schedule, okay? And then again, I'm gonna do specific object, I'm gonna do store, and new work schedule is store schedule again. So it's gonna go back to my original. One last thing I wanna do, I wanna reset, I'm gonna reset my state variable, okay? And I reset my state variable. Um, that was the store of shift, this variable. Now reset that value to zero now, right? Okay. So that we can keep using that and we don't have to, we don't keep, you know, basically, you know, go back to this check and it'll keep saying one, right? So we need to reset that value to zero. Okay. So let's see if this solves the issue now. Okay. Let's run it and observe what happens. So 0.5 turned on, stored on shift. It's processing, processing, processing. And then at 5.5, uh, when we first ran this, uh, there were monotities that are stuck at the input buffer. Now at 5.5, we know the work schedule changes to basically stay on. So it stays on. And then now you see we're at six here. Now the store is off shift, okay? So this now solved this issue of model entities being stuck at the input buffer when the store server goes off shift, okay? So hopefully this helps you out and you know, I'll have this example posted so you can take a look yourself. Uh, hopefully this takes care of any issues you've had working with uh, this particular specific case. Okay, thanks for watching, take care, bye.